Hello everyone! Today we've got a very special, or at least interesting, review as we are going to be reviewing a Monkey Kid set. Now, I'm not typically known for Monkey Kid set reviews because this is going to be the first one reviewed on my ch channel and also the first one that I have ever purchased. And before we get into it, I think that this is definitely a good one to pick up. Whether you feel that way after this review, you can see, but this does have 2,187 pieces, which is a great building experience for $150. This is set 80036. And it also is rated for ages 9 and up, which is pretty standard for larger sets. Some are obviously more, but let's get into the minifigures. We do get Pigsy, which is definitely a fan favorite. I know that that's probably one of my favorite Monkey Kid characters, even though I don't know too much about the show. So uh, there's that. We also do get two CityBots. So you bought A05, which has a bit of a pink lamp. And then CityBot A16, which has a green lamp. I know it's a little bit harder to see that because there's a little bit of scuff or just kind of wear and tear on the box. We also get Huang, and I apologize if I'm saying any of these names wrong, Mr. Tang, Mei, the train driver, Han, and also Monkey Kid, as expected. Let's go look at the back. Except I realize that I haven't really discussed anything about the front of the box art, and you get this lovely shot of the city, which there are two variations which I will show off. Uh, but this is the full stack with the train station and all. You do get a little bit of busyness down at the bottom with people using some of the shops. You know, the robots doing their thing. You get an action of the various storefronts that are here. You get Monkey Kid taking the little fire at the top of the hotel there. Which, not too familiar, so I can't really say too much about that. But you do get a lovely shot of the general cityscape. Now onto the back which is a very lovely shot of the interior of something. Some of the interiors are blocked uh, due to the layout of it, which is why there's a separate angle lifted on the side, whereas if you take off all the buildings, you can set it up so that you have a great access to all the interiors and making it a lot easier of a little bit of a city center where you can kind of just have all your shops laid out and just kind of have access to all the interiors. And you can display it that way, or you can display it in the... Uh, physical like full body of it which is very nice you know you can have some diversity to that you get the uh, boba tea store which here is a nice inclusion you do get some uh, ramen over there with mr tang and of course you do have a karaoke booth which is pretty fun to see here and also just a lot of action with the map theming here uh, which definitely seems to be what the season at least of monkey kid is doing now so, you do get that in the box art here as well. But let's jump into the minifigures, which there's quite a handful. Now, out of all the Monkey Kid characters, I think Pigsy is one of my favorites. It could just be that it's a talking pig, but who really knows? Now, Pigsy does come with a red megaphone and also some binoculars, which is pretty nice. You know some utility. He does have a utility, like, pack, which we'll get into when we get to his little flying vehicle here in just a second but he does have his little teen legs which is kind of the in between of the child legs where they're unbendable and also the adult legs so you can bend them you can sit them down which is very nice now moving up you do get his uh, uniform here for his ramen store where he sells all of his soups which is pretty nice uh, now it is stained a little bit because of course he's a hard worker he's getting all of the managerial stuff done and dusted uh, he does have a bit of a pig belly, which is to be expected as Big Z, given by the name and also the character, is a pig. So, that's pretty nice. Uh, you do also get his little red collar there, which folds down a little bit to kind of tie in the uniform. He does have his little logo there in a little bit of a golden tan, which is very nice. And also his shirt is off to the side a little bit, which is very interesting where it's buttoned up onto the side. He does also look like he has a blue undershirt. Now, he's a little bit wary in his expression. He does have some very nice, this is custom molded, of course, with a very pig nose, as to be expected, very pink, some pig ears as well, with a bit of a chef's hat on top. So you can mix and match hats if you do so choose, but be warned, not all hats will fit this character. Moving on to the back, although he does have a little bit of a backpack here attachment, we will cover that later because it doesn't really uh, add too much in its current state. However, on the back he does have some chopsticks in the way in his little uh, like belt thing, but it looks more like a scarf, so not too keen on what that is. There is also a little bit of stuff over on this side. I can't quite tell what it is, but it's there. He also does have a larger logo 
which is very nice and overall just ties the rest of the look together with the coloring and just kind of the general aesthetic that you want to see. Nothing on the back which makes sense as this really wouldn't make sense if you had a two-faced pig where you have pigs out on the back and on the front so that kind of does make sense. However, right, let's move on to the robots. Here are the two city bots that we get uh, which are pretty simple design. You can bend them slightly at the knees so you can get a little bit of posability and of course you can move the arms up, down, and around. Uh, one of these currently has a wrench because they are doing some repairs and the other one uh, does not have anything as they would be working at the hotel getting some luggage for the customers here. However, they're just here to do the maintenance of the city, kind of help it run as you might say. Now the head is the same because on the right we can see the front of the head which is a little bit more mechanical. You do get the eyes, you do get the mouth, so you do have some speaking abilities from these robots if you want to do so. And on the back, you have more of just like a rounded out, just robotic parts and bits. Maybe a battery, who knows? They might be battery charged. They might be solar panels. Uh, I don't know. They've got, some, they've got some stuff there. They also do have a bit of a winding gear there, although I don't think so. However, if you so choose, you can choose to wind them up just by turning the little cog there and wind up robots if you so choose. They also do have distinctions through the color on the top of their head. So, they have a little bit of detail there. They're nothing too special, but it's just extra characters, semi-characters, if you want to so choose. And it kind of helps diversify what you have in the set, which is pretty nice. Next up is Huang, which I have the least confidence if I'm pronunciating that correctly. However, they do have some very light blue pants there. Nothing too crazy. Uh, moving on up, we do have a yellow jacket with a like gray shirt uh, with a little bit of a belt sticking out from underneath the shirt with a little bit of a heart necklace there which is barely visible however you can somewhat see the glint of the gold there uh, in their hand they are holding a little bit of a lantern on a stick which is quite nice you know you get some extra lanterns if you so need to and you can kind of parade around the streets if you so choose they are pretty happy with themselves and they also have some jet black hair that kind of goes down we'll see that more when we turn it around turning it around you can see the continuation of the hair and unfortunately no second face so that's pretty much a bummer so you don't get anything but happiness but still some decent detail and good to get an extra character rather than just nothing so still pretty good next up is mr tank here who has some dark red pants, and a very nice ramen t-shirt, or it's not really a t-shirt, it's one of those like sleeveless shirts, which I am completely forgetting the name of, however they do have chopsticks in one hand, and a bowl of ramen in the other, or it could be some dumplings, or anything else really, it could be mochi for all I know, uh, and all I know is not saying much because realistically I don't know much, however they do have a lovely scarf there, some glasses, a little bit of a blank expression because they have not dug in, in digging into, have not started eating their food yet, and they do have a bit of a cone over in jet black, so that's nice to see. However, on the back, they do have the drip of the scarf and also the continuation of that comb over just on the back, but underneath the scarf and the hair, I should say, you can see a little bit of a ball of ramen there at the bottom, a little bit of a checklist that looks like, and some characters there which I cannot make out or at least if I tried to I'd probably get them horribly wrong and as you can see Mr. Tangier is yawning as they have finished uh, eating their ramen while I have been or food food you know I don't really want to judge what this is but I'm assuming it is ramen as there is a physical ramen store here and as you can see I have taken away the ramen just to kind of emphasize that a little bit but uh, that's just a little thing let's move on to our next character Moving on, we do have Mei, who just has some simple white pants, nothing special. However, they do layer into the upper area where you can see that they do have a bit of a place for a belt. However, that's mostly covered by both the jacket and also the purse, which is a light blue and looks really good. It is quite obstructed by the jacket. However, the jacket does have a little bit of a button up. It is opened up and it also has a few little stripes there or little dashes. 
uh, on either side and also looks like a heart shaped pin over on one of the little sides there. There is a little bit of a logo there in the center which I can't quite make out in the light green of the shirt and they are holding, holding, not holding, holding a phone there, you know, making some calls, making some videos there because apparently they are a social media influencer, which I did not think that I was going to say that in this video, but now I am. Now they do have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a side smile there with uh, some interesting uh, black hair with some green accents at the bottom and some pigtails up at the top with a little bit of a brush mustache at the front. So definitely a chaotic hairstyle, however, one that is definitely interesting that we have not seen before in LEGO, so that's definitely very nice to see. Over on the back, we do have a very lovely dragon with some characters in the back. I'm not going to assume which language they are because I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to try to make that assumption. And also that belt goes around here, so very interesting little design choices, which I'm not too sure of, but uh, it's still there. It's still very green. Uh, the back of the hair does drop down to only about uh, neck length, so nothing like what we've seen previously. However, underneath we have a more explosive and out there expression, which is pretty nice to see, especially since we do get a second face here. Next up, we do have the older train driver here who does have some simple black pants, however, moving up to their blue and black vest, which looks really good. We do have some blue pockets there, probably to hold some tickets. We do have some blue buttons leading up to the black tie with blue stripes, which looks very good. We do have a nice little shirt there with a little bit of an indent to kind of hold the tie there, and also some white sleeves to kind of show that this is in fact a vest. Moving up, they do have a little bit of a brussel mustache there in gray with some glasses and uh, just generally satisfied with their job here, with a nice little dark red cap to go with it. The back, however, does not have much to hold, as it's just a few blue lines and a continuation of the collar, so nothing too special, but still better to have at least some detail than no detail. Now, our almost last minifigure is Han here, who has just recently stopped by the Lego store. Uh, given by the Lego store bag that they have. They do have some blue pants here with, again, a nice, uh, interesting color of lime uh, for the shirt. Not really the most interesting thing there. Definitely have not seen that color before. This Lego set has definitely had some interesting color choices, some of which are very interesting. This is one of the more exotic ones. However, the little jacket there is very interesting with lots of fire rising up to the start and then just ending off with some red there just going out and finishing off the sleeves with an interesting lightning bolt there at the center of the shirt. They are very happy as given by the fact that they just picked themselves up a Lego set and also have some very flowy down black jet black hair that just kind of goes all around there just kind of flowing down onto the shirt and the jacket as well. The hair does drip down past the neck and past the shoulders, so it's very long hair, however, underneath. We still do see some happiness, however, a lot less than the ecstatic that we saw earlier, and also some more of that flame going on around the back of the jacket with a little bit of some indentation lines maybe to show the stitching of the clothing there. And finally, our protagonist, the monkey kid here, with definitely some little detailing on the legs with some pockets there and a little bit of a string thing in the other one. Not really too sure what that is, but it does have a little bit of detail there, uh, unlike some of the other characters. A little bit of a fanny pack there, although that will not be welcome in all languages, so apologize for that there. But they do have a lot of detailing there with a white underneath and a red top, which is very interesting. You do have one hoodie string there, which is very interesting, that's out in the open, and one that's kind of covered by the satchel there, or pack that they are wearing. Some green, which I'm not quite too sure what is. However, in one hand, they do have their very special staff with the golden hilts there, which look very good with the red. And also, since they're the extended variety, they just kind of add to the aesthetic there because these look a lot better. Uh, for this case, instead of the genuine lightsaber hilts that we normally see, and also a very nice map there to kind of show the locations. Here uh, we see the little fire ring, which we will get to later. 
on a very lovely design scroll. I will take those off though so that it's a little bit easier to see the rest of the detailing later on. And also the face is pretty, pretty good happy. There's nothing to complain about here. Most of these characters are just living life, having a good time. There's no villainy afoot here, so that's always good to see. A nice little headband uh, overlaid on top of everything, which would have been uh, great to see on Hunter uh, for when we got the Bad Batch. However, uh, we did not get that same here, but it does look great on this headpiece here with some spiky flowy jet black hair again. And flipping it around here, we do have that spikiness kind of thrown at us. We also do get the tie of the headband, which looks very good and kind of realistic there with a little bit of a pin so that we can holster uh, either the bow staff or the map if we so choose. And they kind of fit, however, uh, the map does look more like a cape than anything else. So let's take all of those off and see what we have. If you pardon the mess, you can see the hood there in a nice red, and also a little bit of that uh, strap there that goes from the front little pouch there that we had. We also have a little bit of a zipper there on the side. Not too sure what it does. It could be just a hidden pocket. However, they do have some what look to be just like either sunglasses or could be some kind of special glass with a little bit of gold there, which looks very nice. And they're also just very happy again. Very happy these people are. Which is very nice to see you know lots of happiness instead of the brutalities of war and everybody's just very upset and not having a good time so this is very a light-hearted set because you just get all the good stuff and none of the stuff that makes you depressed and unhappy which is i don't know why i'm bringing that into a lego review but hey in this channel you don't know what's gonna happen so let's just roll with it now, normally I don't use the smaller stage for little buildings here or side builds, but I think this one uh, does make a lot of sense because this is the little cart that Pigsy has. It is a little bit of a flying blimp. Interesting, though, I do not really like the uh, floating top design. However, it does work slightly. As you can see, there is a spot to put Pigsy inside, and they can kind of scope out the area if they don't fall off and kind of hit the ground. However, as they are a Lego, they will be perfectly fine. So. And I do assume that some people might have been wondering what Pigsy looks like without the hat. And that's it. Nothing too special. But it's definitely interesting. However, uh, at this point, you can take off the little backpack. Uh, knocking that over. However, you can put it here on Pigsy. And you can have it so that he has his to-go pack so that he can cook up some stuff on the go. And just kind of have extra storage for all his little utensils there, which is very nice. Overall, pretty simple bit it build. It does have some claws to kind of stay up there you can kind of have it stand up and look like a little bit of a menacing little creature there however it's nothing too crazy compared to the build that awaits us for a size comparison i think this is definitely uh, a good one here as you can see all my lego star wars in the background we do have uh, definitely the small remains of the empress palace which is completely dominated by the height of the set uh, for comparison, I think the blacksmith might be a good idea, which is a three-floor behemoth right here, and it's not even the height of the power line, so realistically, this is for size comparison. These, these two sets are the same price here, have roughly the same amount of pieces, and realistically, this, this thing does tower over it, so... For money value, you do get a large playset here, no doubt about it. That is just completely crazy to the actual extent of the value that this gives, which is great for anybody that's interested in this set. So I do applaud LEGO for putting so much effort and value into this set, but we should probably get into it because this is definitely going to be one of the longer reviews on my channel. Unless it's not because there is a 20 minute advent calendar review, which is still mind boggling to this day. So let's start taking this piece by piece. Now, of course, we do have a nice little train here, which does have three seats. It does have the Pigsy logo with some control panels here that are quite difficult to access if you are inside the train, as you'd be sitting right there. And the control panel is a little bit ways out there. It's a little bit unfortunate. However, you can fit most of your minifigures, except for if you have Pigsy with his backpack or if you have Monkey Kid with a staff or thing on his back there. So... Generally, this train is pretty nice. It does go all the way around. It does hide itself on the back here, but 
it does provide a lot of fun stuff here so you can just kind of spin it around you can take it from station to station which there are two here one on this side so you can lay off passengers so that they can go off to the uh, upper level or you can go ahead and drive them around here to this side so that you can take them to the bottom level so there is accessibility on both sides which is great you know if you want to have this be like a realistic play function you do have that there and you also have some technic pins here down the stairs with a little bit of a logo there to show you that this is a train station and also a little bit of advertising to show you you've got your panda store there you've got your lego store right there you've got the crayfish there selling you food you do have your ramen shop and you also do have your boba tea so that's very nice and accurate might be a little bit hard to see there but moving on down you do have yourself an extra train ticket right there i believe that is and that could be or it's just another coupon for noodles who knows i'm pretty sure that's just more noodles but who doesn't love some good noodles now, more importantly, a little bit to the left of that area, we do have access to this very big control panel for the train, which just has various schedules, it has various locations and tool tips, and also some information guide that's going to tell you all about it. Now, you can step a little bit to the side, and you can ignore the little bit of dust that's here. You can find some stray packages and some foliage with some stairs, if you skip over those stairs, you can find some boxes just with some ramen on top and some other deliciousness on the bottom there. You can find some gas there and also some more foliage before you're making your way to the karaoke stand, which we will cover more in depth later, like the interiors of the buildings. However, we're just going on a roundabout, currently with a microphone and a little bit of a sun spotlight with a bit of a sign there to kind of show off the karaoke stand with someone singing and then also some magic fairy lights there with the use of the wands. We do have lots of lovely lanterns here. This one's a little bit off place. And the only downside of having to redo the lanterns is that you will probably break the track a little bit. It's not too difficult to fix though. We do have our boba stand with this lovely little boba cup and some more signs that say just bubble tea. It is also boba so uh, boba tea, so that's why I've been referring to it as boba tea instead of bubble tea, however both are acceptable, and also some more characters there, with some more of that cute little boba or bubble tea, with some little boba pieces inside, and also another sign advertising the boba, with some just fun stuff there to make the boba yourself. Now, moving on, you do get the Monkey King there, looking at the new glasses, which we do see uh, Monkey Kid rocking. We do have the door over here to get into this nice little place, and we also have some dumplings over there, which is, I'm assuming, uh, what the Mr. Tang was looking. If we move the train a little bit, we can see the nice little logo here, which looks very good, and also the very lovely done air conditioning units here, with just Monkey King here, and having a nice little bow of these little vegetables here. Uh, we do have some peppers, some mushrooms there. Uh, I'm assuming some more chili bits, uh, some more pepper bits, and also some blue stuff there, which I'm not too sure of what is, and some noodles. So I'm assuming that that can either be some soups or some stir fries. Either way, very interesting. If we continue moving, we do have a little bit of a uh, movie here. We have Havoc in Heaven here, which is related to another set. It's come out, and Monkey Kid's Time in uh, heaven where he kind of made a big mess of things. I don't know too much about Monkey King lore, however, I probably should read up on it uh, if I ever want to make another review. However, that is related to another set uh, that is coming out in the August wave, funnily enough, uh, which is very interesting there. So cool to see a little bit of reference to that. And then also we have the uh, evil Bull King there just uh, selling up some stuff there. I'm not too sure what exactly that's referring to, however, it is a very lovely poster there, which you will see if you're looking out the window of your train station. Now, we will cover the crayfish store a little bit better a little bit later on, however, we do have another camera here, one was at the front, which you may have noticed. We also have the end of the Dragon Tail, which is up at the Lego store, which has a various collection of sets here. We also do have a very nice little uh, hotel here, which we will get to later, and a little bit of a medical store here. You do have another track here, which just can be like a little bit of a roof uh, for when you're going there, and a little bit of a glimpse into the various shops there. However, there isn't too much here on the back, except for a little bit of a cleaning booth, uh, and a little bit of a more advertisement for some more Monkey Kid stuff at the Panda store there, and some flyers 
of a lost cat as well. And also maybe a classic space. Yeah, classic space there. And also some more noodles with cheese maybe. I don't know. But we do have some lemon and some ice cream there. So very fun stuff at the panda store. And of course the little cleaning unit which can fold out a little bit. I do think that it's a little bit difficult, uh, specifically because I'm using one hand. However, you can uh, lift it up slightly, and I'm just failing miserably. However, uh, if you are using two hands, you will have an easier time, and you can use your robots to kind of clean up the place, which is very nice to know. Uh, and I think that should mostly cover the outside, except for a few things here. However, we'll cover the rest of those when we physically take this apart. And here we are with all the shops taken to the side. We now have a stripped down version of this little square and you can immediately tell that it looks very empty here. We can see uh, some more foliage with a little bit of frog and a nice little oil spill there, which is very unfortunate. It's not a nice oil spill, it's very sad. However, let's look into the karaoke booth, which we didn't originally. However, you can see there's a little bit of a computer there where you can play as the characters and sing along to whatever song you might like. There isn't too much in there, however, you can fit yourself in there and have a good little time, either with yourself or someone else, however, it is going to be very cramped at that point. And realistically, that kind of finishes off this, so we can get into the individual buildings. And, geez, this is definitely a lot to cover, but that just shows you how much value there is in the set, which is just... There's a lot of it, to put it lightly. Now I think it all may make sense to continue with the boba store, which is probably which is one of the smaller ones, true. However, it is one of the cuter ones with some extra storage up at the top here, and a little bit of an interior shot where you can see them kind of making the boba where you do have a little bit of a dispenser. And you've got some other little bits here, a little bit of counter space there. Nothing too crazy, however, you do get two boba drinks and some extra supplies to make some boba. So you can definitely replenish your supplies and also this little front feature, which has some purple studs in there, looks very nice at the front. And you also get all of these cute little signs here and a stairway up with a roof that looks very nice. Not too much to do in this store here, uh, but it still looks very good. Uh, another small one here with the crayfish here, which looks really cool, with hot dog pieces being used as the little uh, whiskers there, and also a chef's hat looking very cool. You don't have too much posability with these arms, as you can only really move them slightly uh, in and out, but you can move them a lot up and kind of have the vibrant neon green of the sign with characters which again I cannot read however they do have some of these hot peppers here that you can enjoy while you're sitting there and kind of enjoying yourself up at this balcony restaurant there which is just a simple thing but it's also a more dining area which is very nice you know there's a lot of dining here uh, but there's still a lot of fun stuff so it's very nice and also this crayfish looks absolutely lovely so that's a good plus. We should probably cover this hotel, so uh, this is a very nice uh, combination of this little blue here uh, and this deep red, which looks very good in combination here together with some nice little golden potted plants with some little blades used to simplify some little plant life, which is very nice, some red carpet there, very dusty. We do have a lotus up at the front, but if we open the door and step into the Lotus of t Hotel, of course, which has this lovely lamp there with some more symboling there. And also up at the top, some silver frogs with the lotus there, which contains the fire uh, little thing that the monkey kid wants. Don't know my, uh, you might be able to figure that out if you watch the show. However, uh, I am not, uh, I probably do not have the time to watch a show right now. So uh, here we go. We have a little bit of lore there which is very nice there. So you do get a lot of elements of the lore here. Uh, if you want that, if you want to pause it and kind of go check it out, you can. We do have some suitcases there, which the robots bring up. And then you've got yourself a very nice bed here with a little bit of a tool there uh, so that you can do some stuff there. You got this nice little lamp and you've also got uh, this little poster here of a flower, which looks very nice. It could be a lotus. Uh, it could also not be a lotus. It could be something else. Who knows, really? Unless you're a botanist, but we also do get 
some nice little windows to see out of, and that's really it for the hotel. It's pretty, it's pretty small, but it's a very tall building that kind of acts as the centerpiece specifically because it does have the fire on top. We have already looked at the staircase a little bit, however, on its own it is quite flat there, and it just kind of acts as an access point when we do eventually go through all of these and make the uh, big version of it. The Panda Store here has some interesting stuff. Aside from selling ice cream and marketing itself as an ice cream store, it does have this lovely little billboard with some moon cookies with some rabbits on them, and of course, this lady right here, who I do not know who is, but they do sell moon cakes, which I think is what I was trying to say, but then I ended up saying moon cookies, so apologize for that. But we also do have a little bit of the 90 years of play here, uh, symbolized by this little Lego thing, which I did not realize until now. So, fun stuff. I'm discovering new stuff while I'm watching this, so I can imagine that you are too. We do also have this lovely little power line here, uh, which looks great in combination with everything. And inside we do have some supplies there, so you can get yourself some medicine, or some ice cream, or just a golden frog. I'm not too sure what this does, but I do know that there are a couple variations of it uh, in this room. And also the frying pans for ears are just absolutely great there. But we do have the panda store, which sells panda things. What those panda things are, I don't really know, but it also does use that air conditioning unit, which looks really good. So, fun stuff indeed, but on to our next one. With this behemoth of the store, which we have already looked at the outside. However, we should tackle the inside because there is a lot. But before that, on top, on this dusty little roof here, it does have some extra space to walk on because that is needed in the actual set. However, up top, we do have a little bit of a dining area here, which has various condiments and stuff with chopsticks to eat out of these little bowls, which do have some red one-by-one -one studs there, uh, which are plated, so very interesting there. You do have seats for three people here, however, you can stand some people up, and these are very nice dining areas. You've got lots of fun stuff there, maybe some sesame uh, sesame oil and some olive oil there, with some extra salad, condom, and stuff, just a party all over the place, and that's probably going to make a few people nauseous. But downstairs, you do have a bone, a little bit of spider juice, some breathing tanks, very interesting, some of those moon cookies, which are moon cakes, I keep calling them cookies, and also some horns, obviously. We wouldn't love those. We do also have the dumplings now uh, here being sold, which are very nice. We do have some dumplings being made right over there, and also fire extinguishers. So now we can definitely confirm that they are dumplings. Plus on the side, you do get some art here with uh, some fun stuff. I don't know who all these characters are, so apologies for that. However, if you do know your stuff, you will definitely get those references. And you also do get this large little sign here, which you can take off pretty simply and whack it back on when you want to. And finally, or before final thing, we've got the Lego Dragon here with the Lego Store, which has some Lego bricks as details, which look very good. You've got your pick a brick wall, which is always very handy, and some nice little Lego sets there, uh, just kind of showing off. You do have the Monkey Kid mech, and you do have some classic stuff like the Yellow Castle, uh, the little pyramid there. Uh, you do have yourself one of the newer uh, the Garden, uh, from the new, like, I forget what wave it is, but I know that that's like a little bit of a garden there, which I found absolutely lovely. Uh, we also do have the old Space Explorer. Uh, we do have also a creator set there with a little bit of a crane. Uh, we have a little bit of a Lego Friends set there and also a pirate ship. So a great diversity of sets from various eras, which is nice to see. So if you want to get something old or new, you can come to this Lego set and pick out some bricks as well. There isn't really a counter, interestingly enough. However, I think they all make do. The final thing to review here is this line of shops, which looks very good. Uh, now you can use the clips here, which you might be wondering, where do I get those clips? And if you remember from before, we did talk about a little bit of an oil spill, and guess what? Those are some uh, little black connector pins there, which you can use to fully flesh out your little look here. I didn't use those, of course, because I still want to show this off there, so mine is still a little bit flimsy, but you can't. The only problem is that you don't really know where to put the crayfish, so you can kind of just put the crayfish wherever. He can just be blocking the stores but you do have that option, and you can kind of rearrange this however you like. You just probably want this to be here uh, together, and you do want the panda to be on the edge. You can just put it on top next to this so that you have access to the upper area and just kind of make it uh, another dining area. So realistically, there's a lot of functionality in this set, 
and it's definitely a lot to say for $150. So it definitely does have a high price of entry. However, you do get a lot of value out of this set, and I'm not just saying that because there isn't a lot of value, and I kind of just want to extend the video. But no, there's a lot of value here, and if I could condense it, I probably would have because my voice is dying. So I hope you did enjoy this very long episode of me reviewing a set, and this is probably the reason that I don't want to do long set reviews, is because I'm basically exhausted at the end of them. So I hope you do understand that at least a little bit by hearing my voice die over and over again. But I hope you really did enjoy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.